Today, I'm gonna to show you my favorite way to make ham. I use this method every holiday season. Now, I know it's not the holidays, but I do this year round to freezer prep ham. I love to serve this for dinner, put it in recipes, or just to make ham sandwiches because it's so good. And the best part is that I'm cooking this in the slow cooker. So this alleviates having to use the oven, especially if you are creating your big holiday dinner. It's so good and so easy to make. Here we go. Okay, holiday ham, even though it's not the holidays. Here I'm working with, this is 7.96, so an eight pound bone-in smoked ham. And this does say it is fully cooked, bone-in, and I actually prefer this type of ham over pre-sliced spiral cut hams because it stays so juicy and tender. It does not dry out. So this is my preference for working with ham. Now I will be using a glaze, which will be an eight ounce container of honey. I will be using coarse grain mustard, or you could use Dijon mustard, and just half of this bottle. I'm not using all nine ounces, so about four to five ounces of that. I will add a little bit of ground cinnamon into the mix. And I love to add ground clove into the mix, but today I'm just gonna use whole cloves and place it into the flesh of the ham. I have a jar of maraschino cherries. I'll be using the juice and the cherries, sliced pineapple, juice and pineapples, one and a half cups of brown sugar, and it's just going to be so flavorful, tender, juicy, spiced, and easy to make. So let's put it together. So I want to show you how I prep this ham. This was actually a fully trimmed ham. As you can see, this was trimmed off. That's the way it came in the package. But typically with these bone-in hams, it has like this thick outer skin that stays on the top of the ham. You'll want to remove that. I have an older video where the ham did have that and you just remove it. You don't want to cook that part. It's like a very thick skin and you'll remove that. So what I'm going to do now is score the ham. I'm gonna get a small paring knife and I wanna show you, this is the bone. So, you know, you have to be aware when you're scoring it, you know, don't, don't cut that part. This is the bone that's in the ham. And I'm just going to go in, not very deep, and you're gonna just cut, just, you know, cut across. So you're gonna cut in and then do cross hatch. That's how I do it. So I'm just gonna keep going in lines this way, and then I'm gonna diagonally just do the, the opposite direction. And I'll do that all over the ham. So as you can see, that's kind of what you're looking for, this like cross hatch scoring of your ham. And I didn't go very deep. You don't wanna, like cut into it too deep, but you just want to be able to have a lot of flavor kind of go into the ham. This is why you, you want to do that. Okay, so I am going to insert or I'm going to put these here. I'm just going to take a clove oops, and push it right into the exterior of the ham. And you can separate it by like two inches. You don't have to, you know, and if you just want to do like the top you know, depending the clove flavor, but this is so aromatic. Look, that's the bone, <laughs> but this is so aromatic and it really does give it that holiday spiced ham flavor. Some people just find the flavor of clove on ham off-putting, so you can skip this. I love it though. This truly is just a great way to kick off the holiday season is to make ham whether it's for a dinner or just for yourself. It really is just my favorite thing. So I'm just gonna continue doing this all over the ham. Okay, so I'm gonna take my cherries, open that up and just pour the juice. Same thing for my pineapples. And I did not buy the pineapples that came in the syrup. You wanna make sure, well, at least for the recipe that I use, it's in the natural juices. I'll tell you what, I gotta be careful, but there we go. Just pour that in there like this. Okay, so for the brown sugar, um, this is one and a half cups of brown sugar. To that, I'm gonna add one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. And at this point, you could add uh, the half teaspoon of ground cloves, but because I'm using whole cloves, I'm just gonna skip that part. Now I'm just gonna give this a good mix in the tiniest bowl ever. 
let's switch this up. This makes it a lot, <laughs> this will make it a lot easier with a bigger bowl. Okay. And I'm gonna coat this after I add the wet part of the glaze. So give that a good mix and it's done. Okay, now for the honey mustard portion of this glaze, I'm gonna empty an entire eight ounce jar or bottle of honey right into the bowl. Okay, so now we're going with like four ounces of this coarse grain mustard. It's like half this bottle. I think I'm gonna add just a half teaspoon of cinnamon into the mix. Now you're just gonna give this a really good mix. And this is just part of the coating and glaze of this ham. It's thick and when you pour it over the ham, the brown sugar adheres a lot better to it. So there we go. Okay, so I have my ham inside my eight quart slow cooker. You'll, you'll wanna make sure that everything fits. In one of the last videos, I had to trim some off the top. Someone also said that you can wrap the lid with foil without having to trim the top so it'll fit. That's an idea, that's a really good idea. But this one does fit well with the lid. So first things first. I want to show you what I did is when I took when I took my ham out of the package I rinsed it in cold water and you'll want to make sure you dry it off so remember that reserved pineapple juice and cherry juice I'm gonna just pour that on the bottom I'm not gonna pour it on the ham and don't worry about that because I like to reserve the the, the liquids and glaze at the bottom of the, the slow cooker. Because you dried the exterior of the ham, this is going to help the glaze stick a lot better. And you just pour it on the top and just make sure it's all coated. Now you're gonna go in with your brown sugar. I'll tell you what, I'll do it with my hand. And just coat the top of the ham. So there's that. And now I'm going to place my pineapples on top. Add the cherry in the center with a toothpick to kind of hold the pineapple in place. There we go. I'll do one on this side. And you're gonna just, right in the center, okay. Here I have leftover cherries, and I'm just gonna add that right all around, just like that. And here it is. Here is my prepped ham ready to go in my slow cooker. So, all I'm going to do is cover it with a lid. Thankfully it fits, barely. And I'm gonna set this on high. I'm cooking this on high for about two to three hours, and if you set it to low, it's somewhere between four to six. You'll wanna make sure the internal temperature of your ham reaches 140 degrees Fahrenheit. But you know, cook it for about two to three hours on high and that'll do the trick. So there's a saying when people cook in a slow cooker or crock pot, if you're looking, you're not cooking. And what that means is if you keep lifting the lid and checking on the food that's being cooked, it's going to prolong the cook time because the crock pot has to come back up to temperature once you put the lid back on to start cooking again. So for that reason, I'm not gonna lift the lid and baste the ham. Now, you definitely can, maybe once or twice throughout the cook process, but no more than that. But for that reason, I'm not gonna baste it, and that's okay. Don't worry about the liquids getting into the meat and the ham. It's very aromatic, it's very flavorful, and what I like to do is after the ham is cooked, I like to slice it, remove the liquid, and reduce it on the stovetop. So when I serve the ham, I ladle over the hot, sweet, and smoky liquid over the ham. It's so good, and this is why I love this method. It's no fuss. You don't have to lift the lid and baste it. It's gonna be flavorful and so good. Okay, so let's check our ham. It has been 
like three hours, uh, close to three hours. And it smells amazing and I didn't even have to baste it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just shut off that, turn that off. And I'm going to carefully remove it, put it on a baking sheet and let it rest for about 30 to 45 minutes before I slice into it. And the rest of this at the bottom, I could just keep it going in the uh, slow cooker. Actually, I think that's what I'll do. I'll keep this on high and I'll let the juices and syrupy glaze just keep boiling and cooking down. Okay, so here is the ham on my baking sheet. It was very heavy to take out. I use like two metal chopsticks to kind of lift it up and put it on the baking sheet. So left in my crock pot are the cherries. I'm gonna remove the cherries. You can leave them in there, but I'm gonna quickly cover this and just let this simmer and it'll reduce a little bit. Instead of, you know, getting a pot dirty, I'll just, I'll let it keep going in the crock pot. And they did their job. This ham, if you can smell how wonderful and aromatic the glaze is, or the ham is, it's so wonderful. Okay. So I'm probably missing some of these little cloves here, but I want to slice into it. And I'm using my favorite ham knife here. I'm going to turn this around. Clean hands work best. And let's see, let's just slice into it. There we go. So that was a thin slice, but here we are. Oh, this is so good. Okay, so here, this has definitely reduced. It's simmering, it's perfect. So, I'm gonna shut off the heat. And this is what I like, this is what I like to serve. Let's just move that around. I think you'll probably wanna use like a fat separator, but here we go, right on top. And it's so good. Holiday ham, freezer prep, call it what you want. It's so good. I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it. And thanks for watching.